Hello and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome here to the World Cup 2018 in Russia. And in this video, we are going to be going through all 32 teams, all eight groups, and it is going to be exciting. Look at it, all of what we have to look forward to this summer, a festival of football. Get yourself a nice cold drink because here, coming up, is the World Cup guide with everything you need to know. So we are going to start with Group A and that kicks off, of course, with the host nation, that is Russia. Qualifying, of course, automatically because they're the host nation. They get to be in the tournament. Of course they do. They've got a few high-profile players. Igor Akinfeyev. They've got small of their striker from Krasnodar. He's been in really good goal-scoring form over the past season or so. Alexander Kocker in as well. The Zenit St. Petersburg striker. And there's some standout names in the Russian side, which is largely, to be honest, underwhelmed over the past few years. And they'll be hoping, really, to come together and produce some sort of spirit, some kind of good performance in front of the home crowd, which will, of course, be out in force, supporting their own nation. They're going to be behind them, but can Russia step up? That's the question. Then we have Saudi Arabia, a nation, to be honest, who can be very, very proud in itself just to be back in the World Cup finals, having finished this year round second in their Asian Group B qualifying for the tournament behind Japan and they're very much outsiders you know looking at it on the face of it to actually qualify from this group it is going to be difficult for them but like I say just being at the World Cup enjoying the spirit their fans can get behind their nation in a major tournament and as always in these kind of games over a period of a few weeks you just never know and you don't want to write anyone off up next then there is Egypt winners of the African groupie and of course led by the incredible Mohamed Salah and with the right support support around him, he and the whole of Egypt will believe that they can do something at this World Cup, because Mohamed Salah has had, it's fair to say, an outstanding campaign at Liverpool. He's broken all kinds of records in the Premier League. He finished there, of course, top goal scorer, and with the support around him, if they can get the ball to him, if he can get a few goals, they will hope to be defensively solid, and possibly, they could get out of this group, and once you're out, who knows what can happen? And then finally, in Group A, finishing it all off, is Uruguay, who are very very, very impressive in qualifying. They're always a strong outfit. They finished second in South American qualifying, only behind Brazil in that group. Suarez and Cavani, of course, will be leading the line for Uruguay, as they have done now for so many years. A lot of experience in that team at the very heart of it. Diego Godin in goal, of course, Muslera. Players who have played in a lot of major tournaments, racked up a lot of international games. And there's all the big characters in there. And in every single tournament, you can guarantee that Uruguay will be there on they're about. They will be challenging. They will be competing. And you do not want to write them off. They, for me, are clear favourites to progress from Group A. I would expect them to do that quite comfortably to be completely honest. And like I say, once you're out of your group, nobody really will want to face Uruguay. Suarez can hurt you. Cavani can hurt you. And it's going to be really interesting to see how they get on in Russia this summer. And then we move on to Group B, starting with Portugal. Of course, the reigning European champions beating France in that final in 2016. They top Group B in European qualifying coming in ahead of Switzerland and with Ronaldo being the star man of course he's going to be the big man but there are a number of quality players around him they've got some good young talent they've got a good coach there Portugal who really gets them all going as a collective unit our own Nelson Semedo of course will be there Andre Gomez will be there for Portugal and they do have a lot of quality in their ranks along with Ronaldo and when you put all that together possibly Portugal could pull themselves together get out of their group you'd expect them to do that along with Spain and once you're right there, Portugal, given the opportunity, will hope they can go far. And we do then move on to Spain, who once again topped their group in the qualifiers. They came in ahead of Italy. They actually had quite a tough group. They did well to win that group. Very, very good they have looked under Lopetegui, and outstanding, of course, in that friendly very recently against Argentina, blitzing them without Lionel Messi. And of course, winners of the World Cup back in 2010, European Championships as well, around those times. Very serial winners in this team. And Spain, for me, have got a really, really nice blend of experienced players, players who've been there tournament after tournament, the likes of Andres Iniesta, of course, Gerard Pique, Sergio Ramos, really experienced players coming into this tournament with a lot of know-how. And they've also got some younger talent. They've got some players who are coming through, learning the ranks, very, very fresh, very raw, and with a lot of talent as well that can help them really get back to the 
the top of the world's very elite and they will be expecting on what could be a lot of these players last ever international tournaments can Lopetegui orchestrate one last hurrah to these kind of players who've given Spain so many incredible memories over the years particularly of course Andres Iniesta scoring that World Cup winning goal can he have one final swan song at the very top in the World Cup in Russia we're gonna have to wait and find out also in Spain and Portugal's group is Morocco a nation who very much impressed during qualifying they topped their African group C ahead of Ivory Coast and they do to be honest have a number of good players in and around their team from the experience Medi Benatia at the back centre of defence he's had a very very good season in Syria with Juventus wasn't so good when he went to Bayern but back in Syria he's looked really really impressive and he'll be really good at the centre of the defence and then of course they've got the flair the creativity of Hakim Ziak of Ajax who's a very very good player and again has enjoyed a very good season and on their day they do have the potential to potentially cause an upset in this group Spain and Portugal the big big favourites but don't quite rule out Morocco finally in group B we have Iran who are playing in their second successive World Cup for the very first time ever after they qualified as winners of the Asian Group A ahead of South Korea and they'll be very very difficult to break down they really will in qualifying they were outstanding even for somebody like Spain coming and playing Iran we saw it as well at the last World Cup with Argentina they really did struggle to break Iran down and in qualifying they qualified with an outstanding record really of 12 consecutive clean sheets and of course they are coached by Alex Ferguson's former assistant coach and also former manager of Portugal Carlos Queiroz and it is going to be very interesting to see how Iran get on and whether or not they can upset the big boys then we move on to Group C featuring of course France who topped their group in European qualifying ahead of Sweden and after disappointing really in their 2016 Euro final in their own country of course it was a home European championships a fantastic opportunity for them but of course losing in that final to Portugal and of course potential new Barcelona forward could be leading the line for France Antoine Griezmann will be their big source of goals he is their main man Dembele will be in there as well of course Samuel and Titi at their centre of the defence alongside Rafael Varane Paul Pogba who's had a bit of a mixed season and Manchester United he'll look to have a big World Cup hopefully for France's terms and also France will be without Laurent Koscielny the Arsenal centre-back suffered an injury in the Europa League semi-final against Atletico Madrid and he has been ruled out of the finals in Russia and I think the big question for everybody connected with France is can Didier Deschamps finally get it right in a major tournament with this French team with again a lot of young talent a lot of players in there who've got experience who've got quality can he put all that together and get France ticking I'm just really not sure about him then we move on to Australia in Group C and it was certainly a very very long route for qualification for Australia originally they finished third in their Asian Group B behind Japan and also South Korea then they had to go into playoffs they played two playoff matches in total against Syria and then against Honduras they came through all of that and finally qualified for the World Cup looking at their team Aaron Moy is one that does stand out for me somebody who's really established himself this season in the Premier League a vital part really of Huddersfield keeping themselves in the English top flight and also, of course, Tim Cahill. We will all be on the lookout for 38-year-old Tim Cahill once again appearing in yet another World Cup. We'll be looking out to see if he's anywhere punching a corner flag. Then there's Peru, who are finally back in the World Cup after a 36th year absence, finally back in the big tournament, and they qualified by finishing fifth in the South American standings, which, to be honest, was a really outstanding achievement. There's so many good teams in the South American qualifying. Obviously, even the likes of Chile didn't manage to get there, Peru did they can be very very proud of that and they do possess the usual spirit that you find in South Americans teams they work really hard they fight they're going to give absolutely everything at this World Cup Jefferson Farfan another experienced player who coincidentally also plays his football now in Russia will be their man to watch and it's going to be very interesting to see how Peru get on and then finally in Group C is Denmark after finishing behind Poland in European qualifying Denmark had to overcome the Republic of Ireland in a playoff to reach the World Cup and now they're here they do have the players to get out of their group I feel you know look at that team you see Christian Eriksen there who's the difference maker on so many occasions not only for Denmark but also for Tottenham in the Premier League this season a world-class midfielder somebody who always seems to play well and you'll also be familiar with their captain Simon Kier he's been playing his football at Sevilla this season and Denmark will be one of those teams it's going to be exciting to see what they can do and then we move on to Group D and of course this is the big one 
we start with Argentina, and thanks to Lionel Messi's heroics in qualifying, Argentina finally did just about make it to the World Cup, and now is the big question. It is a massive question. Can Lionel Messi finally claim international glory on the big stage? And if he does, it is going to be against the odds, because this Argentina team, aside from Messi, is nothing all that special. The players they have, they're high profile, they're high class players in their club teams, but when it comes to Argentina, it struggles to come together, they struggle clearly in some areas, they are lagging behind, and also that midfield. At times, you look at that team, they've got so much firepower and attack, they've got so much goal scoring ability, but that midfield does go missing in the big games, and Messi is going to have to play at an extraordinary level to really see this Argentina come home in Russia. Higuain, Aguero, Dybala, Icardi, all of those players have been selected in San Paoli's preliminary World Cup squad, but as of yet, it is still really unknown who is going to lead the line in Russia. It is going to be interesting to see if Messi can do the impossible, and of course, a lot of us are going to be behind him. Also in Group D are Iceland, who finished ahead of Croatia in qualifying a team. They'll also coincidentally meet in the group stage of this tournament, and Iceland really are a nation who are simply defying the odds to even be at the World Cup, given their minuscule population, really, of just 337,000 people. That is all that is in Iceland, a tiny country, tiny in population, but somehow they keep producing miracles upon miracle, getting to these major tournaments. They are outstanding, really, at Euro 2016, beating England in the process. Fantastic from them. And now at the World Cup, they've qualified. They're here. It's going to be a wonderful occasion for their fans, a wonderful occasion for their players. And I really do hope they do well. Moving on then to Croatia. After, like I say, finishing behind Iceland in qualifying, Croatia made it to the World Cup after victory over Greece confirmed their place. And Barca's own Ivan Rakitic will once again be part of that strong Croatian midfield alongside the likes of Luka Modric and Croatia really are another nation who have a lot of impressive names a lot of experience at major tournaments the likes of Ivan Parasic, Brozovic Mario Mandzukic they've also been very very good in Syria all three of those players this season and they do have good players at their disposal if they can put it all together and put everything off the pitch to one side Croatia could do something good here. And then finally, in Group D, is Nigeria, who qualified as winners of their African Group B, and a nation, really, who always seem to find themselves in the same group as Argentina. They did in the last World Cup, and they do, though, have the tools to be a threat in this group to any of the teams. They really, really do. Alex Iwobi, the Arsenal man in midfield, a flying winger in many ways when it comes to Nigeria. He has been really, really impressive when he's represented the Super Eagles. And along with that, there's Chelsea's Victor Moses. they got a lot of experience in that midfield with John Obi Mikel and this group is going to be a really really interesting one because obviously you've got Argentina big big favourites you want them to go through you want Messi to do well but all three of the other teams they will all fancy their chances now we move on to Group E and Brazil after comfortably topping the South American qualifying under their coach Tite they are thriving in confidence going into this tournament they feel really good they feel like they've got a great chance they feel like they've got a group of players here who can do something very very special indeed of course Brazil the World Cup really they are the team to beat in the World Cup any World Cup Brazil will be contending Neymar will be fit to return from injury in time for the start of the World Cup no problems at all with that and Brazil's hopes firmly rest to be honest on his shoulders on Coutinho's shoulders they need those attacking players to really thrive in Russia Paulinho bars his own established himself as a very key player under Tite in qualifying and Brazil to be honest had a very rounded squad they've got good players all over the field from the goalkeeper in Allison. they've got a strong back four They've got a good midfield, good attacking players, and the one player that they will miss, very, very sadly indeed, is Danny Elvis. He has been ruled out of the World Cup with an injury, and sadly, he'll play no part. Alongside Brazil, in Group E, you do have Switzerland after they finish second in their group in European qualifying behind Portugal. Switzerland then beat Northern Ireland in a playoff to reach the World Cup finals, and yet another nation really, that does have some talent in their team from their experienced backline, which includes the likes of Fabian Schaar, Lick Steiner, of course, at Juventus, Ricardo Rodriguez, Rodriguez at AC Milan, and then in midfield, you know, Arsenal's Granit Xhaka, somebody who's very, very good in that midfield, particularly for his nation. Then up front in the attacking areas, you've got the Maverick, who's just been relegated actually with Stoke City, Jordan Shakiri, who on his day, just like we saw at the Euros, can be capable of something absolutely spectacular. And then also leading the line usually is Harris Seferovic, who will be looking to fire them out of this group stage. And to be honest, they do have a chance of that. Also in Group E is Costa Rica, who finished second in the CONCACAF qualifying 
behind Mexico and Costa Rica really were a team who lit up the 2014 World Cup. They really did. Their spirit, their energy, their togetherness. They got to the quarterfinal of the World Cup and it was absolutely incredible to see a nation come together and perform like that on the big stage. And they'll need something like that again to really make a mark here in Russia. Real Madrid's Kayla Navas was a massively key part of the team back in the 2014 World Cup and they will need him at his absolute best in this World Cup if they're going to repeat anything like that kind of success. And to be honest, Kayla Navas has endured a bit of a mixed season at Real Madrid. Some good moments, some bad moments. He's going to have to put all of that to one side to really find his best level and try to spearhead Costa Rica out of this group. And then finally, you've got Serbia who qualified having finished top of their European Group D. And for me, I'd actually be very shocked here if Serbia didn't make it out of this group because for they like they have a lot of key names a lot of good talent young and experienced as well like a lot of these nations and for me they've got a really really good midfield Lazio's Milinkovic Savic is one of the hottest young prospects in anywhere right now in world football a lot of the big clubs looking at him and wanting him in their teams and alongside Man United and Manja Matic in midfield they could strike up quite a partnership there in the tender of the field up front they've got Alexander Mitrovic somebody who's been in really good form since joining Fulham in January really spearheading their challenge to try and make it to the Premier League and with Mitrovic you can bank on him either scoring a very important goal or seeing a straight red card inside the opening 10 minutes and to be honest you wouldn't be surprised to see him do both of those. Then to Group F where we have Germany who are comfortable winners really of their Group C in European qualifying and clearly one of the favourites to lift the trophy here in Russia for the second of course successive World Cup. Previous winners of the World Cup and it is not surprising given when you look at the depth of their squad. They have got so many good players, so many really, really good talents coming through, really establishing themselves in the Bundesliga. And if you look at the Confederations Cup, of course, which they won at a canter, really, last summer, that was actually with their B team. And since then, some of those B team players have made the step up. They've established themselves in the Germany senior team. And none other, of course, than Marc-Andre Ter Stegen, who could start for Germany if... Manuel Neuer fails to prove his fitness in time to Joachim Lowe. And then, of course, ahead of the goalkeeper, you've got the likes of Jerome Boateng, Matt Hummels, Tony Kroos, Meza Ozil, Ikai Gundogan, Thomas Muller, Leroy Sané, Timo Werner. I could go on and on and on about the quality that Germany have, and it is going to take a lot to stop them in Russia. Also in Germany's group is Mexico who came through CONCACAF qualifying comfortably and will be hoping once again to bring that usual Mexican spirit to the World Cup. You know, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement. They're always good fun to watch in World Cups and they always give their absolute maximum every single game. Herving Lozano will be certainly one of the players to watch out for, a player who's been in electric form so far this season for PSV. And there's more experienced names in there. You know, look at Guillermo Ochoa, somebody who lit up the last World Cup with his performances. Andres Guardado, who's been very, very good this season for Real Betis, Hector Moreno, Hector Herrera, and also Javier Hernandez, who will all be looking to steer Mexico out of Group F. Then there's Sweden, who are very much expected to be without Zlatan Ibrahimovic in this World Cup. He will not be making a very dramatic World Cup return, which I think, to be honest, is just about fair, seeing as Sweden heroically made it, really, to the World Cup finals without him in qualifying. They beat Italy in a very dramatic playoff, a fantastic achievement from Sweden. They came together as one and they really have done well without Zlatan. It has to be said, they look like a team now, they look together, they look very disciplined, they look well organised, which could really work well for them at a major tournament like this. And they do as well have a few star names. You know, look at Leipzig's Emil Forsberg, Man United's Victor Lindelof. And it's going to be very interesting to see how a zlatan Sweden get on at this World Cup. And finally, in Group F is South Korea, who finished second in their Asian Group B behind Iran, and will be definitely be outsiders to progress from this group. Tottenham's Hung Min Son is their star man for South Korea, and he has been in really good form once again in the Premier League this season for Tottenham, but another man really in their team who hasn't had such a great season is Ki Sung Young, who was unfortunately relegated this season with Swansea City. Moving on then to Group G, and Belgium of course kick us off a team that absolutely stormed through their qualifying phase without losing a single game scoring a bundle of goals and really looking like an exciting nation stacked with talent heading into this tournament but that's been the case now for a number of years a number of major tournaments now we've said about Belgium having the quality having the players in their team to make a success but it just hasn't quite happened Roberto Martinez has been brought in to put that right and they'll be hanging their hopes really on the likes of Eden Hazard Kevin De Bruyne Romelu Lukaku to fire them to glory in Russia and they'll also be hoping to keep it a bit tighter at the back Alderweireld 
Vertonghen, Vermaelen, they'll be in charge of keeping out the goals for Belgium, who definitely had the potential to do something special. Then on to Panama, another team really who you have to say have done an extraordinary job really just to get to this tournament. To qualify, it's a fantastic moment for the country, their fans can come, they can enjoy the moment, and the players stepping out onto the field. It's going to be an incredible moment for the entire country of Panama, and rightly so. Seattle's Roman Torres, the man who scored the historic goal that sent them to Russia, and it will really be a case of having nothing at all to lose for them, taking on the occasion, embracing the World Cup, and it's going to be really interesting to see what Panama do and what they can achieve. Also in Group G are Tunisia after topping their African Group A. Tunisia are back in the World Cup after a 12-year absence, and just like Panama really, it's going to be a tough task to progress ahead of Belgium, ahead of England, but they did show their solidarity right throughout qualifying, and they'll be hoping, just like Panama, daring to dream and wondering what could be if they could somehow stage an upset and get out of this group. Then of course there's England who as usual sailed through qualifying top in their group as they often do ahead of major tournaments. Very very impressive in qualifying. The problem for England though is when they actually get there. Just when they get to a major tournament it always seems to fall apart. They always seem to find a way of shooting themselves in the foot at major tournaments. Whether it be the media getting on their backs, something going wrong inside their camp, their coach, their players. The one thing you can always guarantee with England is that it'll all end up in tears at some stage. Especially if it comes down to a penalty shootout. That is one thing England will be desperately wanting to avoid. And Gareth Southgate is the man who's been charged with hoping to forge a new path with England at major tournaments. And Raheem Sterling, for me, is one of the standout players for them. Enjoyed a fantastic season, rejuvenated under Pep Guardiola at Man City, and he'll be one to watch. As England, can they finally do something at a World Cup? We're going to have to wait and see. And finally then, in Group H, we start here with Poland, who topped their European qualifying group ahead of Denmark, and they look like a very strong team heading to Russia, led, of course, by the Bundesliga top goal scorer Robert Lewandowski. Another good season for him for Bayern in Germany. And it's going to be all about providing, really, that service for Lewandowski. From Poland's perspective, keep it tight to the back. They've got the likes of Monaco's Glink there at the centre of the defence. They've got Napoli's young midfielder, Zielinski in midfield, a very exciting talent. And it's going to be about providing that service for Robert Lewandowski, can they do that? Can they keep it tight? If they do, they will be a country to watch. Also in Group H are Senegal, another country absolutely thrilled to have qualified as Senegal, who will be competing in just their second World Cup finals in their history. And Liverpool's Sadio Mane is, of course, the standout player there, along with Monaco's Keita Balde. They'll be looking to spearhead Senegal's attack, provide some real African flair, and hopefully it's a good one for Senegal. Then on to Colombia, qualifying after finishing fourth inside. South American qualifying and really a nation who just like Costa Rica lit up the 2014 World Cup with some fantastic displays on the pitch and to be honest their general spirit of it from fans and players all united all as one some fantastic celebrations I remember and they'll all be pleased that James Rodriguez has got himself back on track at Bayern he's back in form and ready to lead them into this World Cup once again and this time round they'll also be able to call upon the services of the very experienced and very good in front of goal Radamel Falcao. It'll be a very interesting World Cup for Colombia. Always good fun, always exciting, and a country that certainly shouldn't be ruled out. And finally, the 32nd team that we are going to discuss in this World Cup guide, the final team is Japan, who topped their Asian qualifying group and have actually drastically changed their philosophy in recent times. With the household names like Shinji Kagawa, Kozuke Honda, they have been actually featuring much, much less under the new coach, who much prefers to play a pacey counter attacking style of play and it's going to be really interesting for Japan and everybody watching them to see really how this new outlook, how this new philosophy translates at a major tournament this summer in Russia. It is going to be a festival of football, it is going to be a feast of fantastic nations going head to head, trying to come out on top celebrations, fantastic football hopefully in Russia it's a good occasion hopefully everything stays on track it is going to be a World Cup, it is going to be exciting and let me know in the comments down below guys if your nation is there, what you're looking forward to, who you're looking forward to watching, what players do you think are going to stand out, and like I said before guys, lots more videos coming up on the World Cup and everything that goes with that. So leave your thoughts down below guys, leave a like if you did enjoy this video, I will see you soon, but until then, as always, it is the World Cup!